this tree you can see it's, it's been labeled properly you have three layers with three different colors you can easily to visualize but there is no cavity apart from digestive cavity when you see the very first diagram so that's the reason flatworms flecking elementals they are not going to have or they are not going to be placed into silome kind of animals they are all asilomates so you you should understand this this will help you remember your table that i have given you today so if you want to know what are asilomates it should immediately click that asilomates do not have any other cavity apart from digestive cavity and that is the reason they are asilomates pseudo silomates when you see this you will find two cavities one is here and one is here still it is pseudo silomate because it is confusing that's why it is false why it is confusing even though you find a second cap cavity over here you are not finding any mesodermal layer here there is no mesoderm when you say true coelom you are going to have mesoderm coming into existence now the mesoderm is present only here the pink layer is here it's not present on this side it's directly yellow so if it's present on two sides like here there is one pink layer here one pink layer here so in between the mesoderm you have a complete cavity that's the reason it is coelomate and that's the reason it's confusing so you name it as pseudo coelom because it gives you little glimpse that this might be coelom it, it feels that it is coelom but it's actually not coelom and that is the reason you name it pseudo coelomate right so all your round worms are going to have this particular condition and after round worms when you move further into invertebrates from annelids onwards you are going to have coelomate organisms so till annelids you don't have any kind of organisms which are possessing this yes please you didn't understand uh, do you understand three layers ectoderm mesoderm endoderm okay you can see the ectoderm is blue in color mesoderm pink in color and endoderm is yellow in color right now if you want to make a true coelom you should have the cavity which is layered on both the sides if this is the cavity this layer also should be mesoderm this should also be mesoderm do you find two layers in the second figure you don't find it that's why it is pseudo coelom okay here you see you have the layer form this is pink layer another pink layer so you have one cavity in between two pink layers that is mesoderm and that is why it is true coelom so true coelom is always formed by mesoderm embryonic mesoderm ओके okay? वहां पे क्या होता है एक्चुअली क्या होता है एम्ब्रियोलॉजी में कि यहाँ पे बाइफरकेशन अटक जाता है इसके आगे बाइफरकेशन होता नहीं है इन ऑर्गेनिजम्स में तो इसके आगे होगा नहीं तो इसीलिए वो कंफ्यूजिंग रहता है इसलिए हम इसको सूडोसिलोमेट्स बोलते हैं ओके okay? जबकि इसमें क्या होगा इन ऑर्गेनिजम्स में एम्ब्रियोलॉजिकल स्टेजेस जैसे जैसे डेवलप होंगे मेजोडम इज स्टिल फंक्शनल इट विल स्टिल फॉर्म द लेयर इन दैट्स हाउ द कैविटी विल बी फॉर्म because it the embryological stage has not stopped that descent but here it stops the development of formation of the cavity that's why this kind of difference is come so oh, that's the reason i tell you all your answers lie basically into embryology i've tried to cover few of the embryological concepts also let's see how far we can do it now it's clear okay now we don't stop the coelomic uh, no development here these are not the only three types of coelomes available actually there are few more rather many more now when you talk about coelomates in coelomates also you are going to have two more groups cesocoelomates and enterocoelomates now when you say cesocoelomates and enterocoelomates what does the difference where does this where does this difference lie one thing is sure you are talking everything with respect to mesoderm okay so what happens here is that this particular mesoderm when it is going to form the coelom the cavity it splits into this particular way it's not forming the circle that we are seeing here the pattern of formation of the cavity is different and that is the reason when the pattern is different you are giving it a new name that is cesocoelomates okay so cesocoelomates are one which have solid masses of mesoderm split to form your uh, this particular coelom and when you see here enterocoelo uh, no uh, cellus or enterocoelomates you are going to have this enteron cavity which has grown a lot compared to this okay this has grown a lot and you can see your coelomic cavity is moving somewhere here so that's the reason 
you name them as enterocelomates so in your coelomates group you further have lots of variations i have only chosen <coughs> to give you two more because you can't go in so much details at the last moment of your exams but at least this two names you should remember and the third one is this entero you know ar uh, arcanteron arcanteron is nothing but the primitive de di you know developing digestive gut so that's what is developing here because this is the one which is going to make that digestive tube at the end of the day of embryology so you must remember these words because these are the ones which will come in your mcqs to confuse you what is arcanteron what is you uh, know uh, enteron when you say enteron with respect to cylindrates you're talking about cavity once again right here you are going to talk about with respect to digestive system so all these words will be there into your mcqs you need to understand the word and then select it fine i hope this much is clear till here anybody is having doubts with this two cezo silomates and antero silomates we'll go towards this what is blastopore and all i have taken few slides to make you understand this now the two divisions that i had told you about previously by lateria is divided by few scientists into two divisions those two divisions are this prostomia and uterostomia so it it has lot of things to do with your division at the embryological level whether they are having the coelom the way we consider coelom to be right and that is why there is a difference because this development of coel is the same like this development of the coelom so because of this reason there is difference of opinion between the scientists okay few scientists believe that when this is happening how can you put the organisms into same group coelomates you need to separate them move put few into coelo coelomates put the others into antero coelomates and that's why you have two more groups and that is the reason you have this two divisions okay protostomia and uterostomia these are the ones based on what kind of coelo coelomate or antero coelomate conditions the organisms are going to have right okay now going to your basics before we go further because you need to understand what is gastrula and how this blastopore is coming and how this mesoderms are coming so this is i'm moving into a little part of your embryology so that you can understand where exactly blastula gastrula and the you know this coelomes and everything are coming from you know about fertilization you know you are going to have gametes for fertilization when i say gametes means i'm specifically talking about sperms and ovums right so if uh, if you are talking about female gamete we generally talk about ova if you are talking about males we are talking about sperms we also know that sperms are produced through spermatogenesis process right the ovum are produced through oogenesis process once this has taken this two particular gametes are ready through your gonads when you say gonads you are talking about testes and ovaries okay so ovaries and testes when they prepare this particular gametes the next st step has to be fertilization now it will again depend on what kind of animal it is whether it's choosing for sexual or it's choosing for asexual because we are concerned presently with few of the concepts which are related more to the caudates that's the reason i am taking up uh, the sexual aspect okay so when you are talking about sexual reproduction you need to have a fusion of your gametes now when you do fusion of the gametes you have the formation of a fertilized egg which is what is zygote right so here in this slide you can see fertilized mouse egg right these are the two pro nucleus which will be actually fusing up so that it when it will be generating the further processes related to the development now what happens once fertilization is over now this is what you see here the fertilization this is all happening in the process of fertilization but you actually also have two main types internal fertilization and external fertilization depending on the type of animal whether they are going to release their gametes outside the body or give the you know gametes to the organism by mating process okay so accordingly you will have internal external and then this fertilization occurs zygote is ready it doesn't stop here actual story of embryology starts with zygote so once the zygote is formed it will constantly undergo a process all of these stages which is known as cleavage now cleavage means what cleavage means simple multiplication 
but this multiplication is not as simple as we think about uh, the regular multiplication of cells because here you are not going to increase the volume you are going to have the same volume but you are going to divide your zygote into many 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 small cells okay now this condition this the particular you no know, cleavage has its own pattern it happens in a very systematic way it is not haphazard you know usko acha laga kar liya aise nahi uski bahut sari patterns hoti hai jo invertebrates hai upar tak vary hogi including echinodermates you will find it in selectrics also but each of them they show different pattern of cleavage different pattern of formation jahan jahan pe bhi sexual reproduction hoga zygote formation hoga cleavage hoga hi but patterns will be different it's not going to be the same right cleavage formations whatever cells are formed they are known as uh, generally this you know the last stage ye jo sare bataye hue hain yahan pe metamers and megamers and micromers jo chote wale honge usko micromers bolte hain the the ones which are larger in size they are going to be known as megamers or metamers now all these cells this whole process goes into the even number so you are going to have two cell stage four cell stage eight 16 32 64 like that and one fine time the cleavage will come to its top four stage and you are going to have a ball which has lots of cells only nothing more than that that particular cell is what is ready for your blastula so when you have a 16 cell stage over here this is known as morula stage when you move further from 16 towards hundreds you are going to have blastula stage now when cleavage is happening in the you no know, furthermost steps after 32 cells it's going to start forming a small hole inside the cavity it's just like a, your cricket ball if you take a cricket ball and you cut it into many many small cells right you are going to have one cavity within that cricket ball happening so that cavity increases in size slowly when this whole cleavage process is about to end and that cavity is nothing but your blastocoel so this is that cavity so ultimately you have blastula stage wherein you are going to have this particular blastocoel cavity with inner cell mass you are going to have a ball of lots of cells ready to undergo the next stage and that is what is gastrula over here okay i don't know whether you can read this all slides can you read this from back okay this is blastula which is having one cavity and it's having lots of cells surrounding it which undergoes further stage which is known as gastrulation process now the the most dynamic stage of embryology is gastrulation because here the cells are going to change their position you can have lot of cells moving from one side to the other from the other side to the next side because they are the ones to decide if which particular layer they are going to be a part of so that they can make organs further so for that reason gastrulation is a most important process and it's one of the dynamic process why dynamic because it's very very active why active because cells are moving it's just not multiplication or something happening in a regular sequence but you have lot of cells movement over here in gastrulation and over here you might also find the increase in size of this particular blastula ball so that's what is happening here the cells will constantly move a very very you uh, know interesting you uh, know aspect of gastrulation is if you deliberately change the positions of the cells here you will find wrong you uh, know organs coming out from wrong body parts so very very many experiments have been done on uh, salamander uh, related to gastrulation and scientists had changed lot of positions of the cells during the gastrulation aspects related to salamander development and they have found that instead of the four limbs growing at the four limb side they are growing behind or the tail is growing in front or the hind limbs are growing in front so this kind of changes can happen if you change the position of the cells over here and till blastula stage you are going to have all your cells which are generally not knowing what they are made for they don't know their functions afterwards once they are into gastrulation process they go further they form three germinal layers they know that now i am supposed to make which particular organ then they are going to be differentiated cells so your stem cells are some, somewhere below the blastula stages they are not above the blastula stages okay now all these stages will have little variation in the whole animal kingdom but what happens further 
when the cells are making movement you can see here this particular uh, no portion is going inside this is known as invagination process of the cells the cells are moving inside this particular cavity and one more cavity is created apart from the blastula cavity blastula is still there but now blastula cavity size is reducing and you have a new cavity formed known as gastrocele so gastrocele is coming into picture blastocele is reducing cells are moving inside now the point from where cells are moving inside that is known as blastopore now this has lot of things to do because uh, this will define uh, no in the later aspect from where the mouth of the organism will come closer to it away from it so blastopore is very much commonly uh, showing a, a characteristic difference between lot of organisms here that's why i'm showing you this particular slide right going further this all movement takes on and on and on and you are going to have a uh, no another cavity which is what is your archenteron in the later stage of your gastrulation process so now you have three actual actually you have three cavities blastocele gastrocele and now you have a primitive digestive gut which is what you know as archenteron so when archenteron is formed there is nothing like blastocele existing anymore into that wall it's it's totally gone okay and when this will come you have already the cells of your gastro gastrula stage divided into three particular layers mesoderm ectoderm and your uh, endoderm three main layers so you can see those three main layers here mesoderm ectoderm and endoderm these are the ones which are now ready to make further further make your organs okay so that's the reason this germ layers are very very important and that's how you divide your organisms into diploblastic and triploblastic organisms okay so when you say you are you are having two germ layers in an organism means it's a long procedure going from zygote to that or that of your no gastrulation stage in gastrulation stage the cells are making moving here and there and making three different layers if they make three different layers it's triploblastic organism if they make two different layers it's going to be your diploblastic organism so that's how you have an evolution of diploblastic and the no triploblastic layer so you can see embryology is moving step by step at all the stages and at each stage you have a new animal coming up whether you have a coelomid a coelomid you have diploblast or you are having triploblast it goes on and on now you see that particular chart the last chart that i have shown you come back to this now in that you can see germ layers can you see the germ layers now in germ layers you have written diploblastic and triploblastic and that then the very first square is empty मिल रहा है आपको वेरी फर्स्ट स्क्वायर इज एंटी क्यों क्योंकि वो प्रोटोजुआ है प्रोटोजुआ माने यूनिसेल्युलर तो उसमें डिप्लोब्लास्टिक डिप्लोब्लास्टिक पॉसिबल ही नहीं है ठीक है वो यूनिसेल्युलर है मोस्ट प्रिमिटिव काइंड्स ऑफ माइक्रोस्कोपिक ऑर्गेनिज्म सो यू हैव डिप्लोब्लास्टिक एंड देन ट्रिप्लोब्लास्टिक डिप्लोब्लास्टिक इज देयर टिल योर टीनोफोरा ओके सो सिलेंट्रेट्स तक ऑल द ऑर्गेनिजम्स दे आर गोइंग टू बी this particular diploblastic ones fir aage jaoge to triploblastic milega theek hai so this is how you have to use your chart waisa hi symmetry mein dekho radial biradial bilateral fir niche hai radial bilateral ab ye yaad rakhoge usse samne ka phylum yaad rakhoge to tumko zyada kuch mehnat nahi karni hai aur wo jo ek tag lag gaya hai that taxonomy ko ke bahut boring hai samajh mein nahi aata yaad nahi rehta hai it's just a matter of three page is it clear right okay i think there are few more guests who have come we'll just stop the session here uh, i'll just quickly go once again through this uh, blastulation gastrulation stages see you have basically uh, four five different uh, stages in embryology one is that fertilization then comes the cleavage then comes blastulation then comes gastrulation thereafter you come across morphogenesis and organogenesis process when you say organogenesis process you are talking about formation of the organs so all the organs will be only formed if you have cells for it so our basic purpose is from one single zygote we want to have plenty of cells placed in groups 
so that we can make lots of uh, no organs out of it and that is what is your developmental biology and embryology all about so here in the previous slide you have this zygote okay undergoing cleavage cleavage can be of very many different patterns and types depending on the type of organism you are talking about all these processes are happening in sexual reproduction uh, only it's not a part of asex sexual one so those organisms undergoing sexual reproduction using gametes having a fertilized uh, zygote they will always have cleavage uh, pattern undertaken and thereafter formation of the blasto blastula uh, no uh, part now when blastula is formed what exactly you have you are going to have your single celled zygote converted into multiplied into plenty of cells but the size of that zygote that particular ball is the same it's not going to increase during cleavage the apple if you are taking an apple you cut it from as many planes as possible the size of apple is not growing so that's what is all about cleavage it's the main characteristic of cleavage happening or no or multiplication happening during the time of cleavage pattern once that is occurred and you are having blastula you are having a blastula with a blastocene which is nothing but a cavity it has lots of cells the smaller ones are known as micromeres the bigger ones are known as megameres now this can be equal also it depends on what kind of cleavage has taken place okay so this is this blastula doesn't stop here you it undergoes into a dynamic process of changing the positions of the cells and that is what is known as gastrulation process right now during gastrulation what happens is cells are also moving and you are going to have this movement of the cells known by two particular major processes but that is what is invagination we technically in embryology use the words emboli epiboli okay so that's how the cells are moving inside that, that is there is a pattern of movement so that is having a different technical word if you can't remember that that's fine but you need to know that during gastrulation there is a movement of the cells going through one particular point and that point is known as blastopore from where the movement begins right and cells are changing its position at the same time this cavity this is what is your blastocene this one this is reducing in size as cells are moving and new cavity is formed that new cavity will be named as gastrocele because you are into the process of gastrulation okay so gastrocele over here it's not shown exactly but then gastrocele will be formed later on and you are going to have just a small remnant of this blastocele along with the gastrocele at the end or when the process of uh, gastrulation is about to end at that time you are going to have two cavities formed again this is not going to stop it's going to go further and you are going to have the development of this archenteron that is your digestive cavity form at the end of this you uh, know whole process of gastrulation what you get is you are going to get your digestive primitive gut which is what is archenteron okay you are going to have little remains of the blastocene you are going to have obviously the blastopore over here and you are going to have the most important that is the three main layers which we name it as germ layers mesoderm endoderm and ectoderm now when you say endoderm endoderm is always very much in you uh, know in contact with this particular you uh, know archenteron whereas when you say ectoderm it's the outermost layer of the cells and in between ectoderm and endoderm you are going to have one layer which is what is mesoderm so ultimately three layers will be formed now why do you name them as germinal or germ layers because all these cells are the ones which are going to form the organs in the further process organogenesis so because of that reason you name it as the germinal layers they are they are not sufficient enough they are further going to divide further going to continue forming the organs so now the whole shape will change we are going to have one step ahead which is known as primitive stick formation now i am not going in details of primitive stick otherwise you will once again get confused here what exactly it means but you need to know that you have a gastrula stage wherein the ultimate result of that stage is formation of three important germinal layers now it might be two layers depending on the type of organism if at the end of gastrulation the organism forms only two layers then those organisms will be listed labeled as diploblastic 
and if you are having at the end formation of three then they are they will be labeled as diploblastic and we have already seen in the you no know, chart which are the diploblastic and which are the triploblastic so you need to remember now from where the triploblastic organism starts and till where you are going to have diploblastic organisms these are general characters it's not difficult to remember the characters this is the only thing you don't go systematically to understand the characters otherwise every time you have to use these main points only symmetry body organization you talk about uh, different uh, life processes you are talking about the habitat the germ layer this many things if you consider you will have all the you no know, characteristics listed in front of you related to that group of organisms right so this is all about gastrulizing now is it clear last french and this is what is diploblastic and triploblastic once again we have discussed this so not di discussing further about it archenteron because the term is very much confusing and uh, the students get confused with uh, coelom and archenteron and you uh, know enteron and all that's why i have just taken a small definition of this archenteron that it is the digestive tube it is the most primitive gut from where your whole digestive tract is going to develop so it's all about developing the digestive tract basically blood cavity or rather you have the cavity filled with blood which you generally see in arthropods now you know that this is hydra you are talking about cylindric where is arthropod and where is cylindric so obviously hemocene is not going to be your answer now when you see many a times it will happen so if you don't know the terms you won't be able to justify which which answer to be selected okay and that is why you need to know each of these particular terminologies now cylenteron you know it's hydra and we have and all your cylentrates are going to have an enteron rather a special kind of cavity actually cylentrates word came from enteron cylentron that's why they were named as cylentron right so here the answer is going to be cylenteron but let me explain you the two more terms pseudo seal it is about sea loam we are not talking about any kind of enteron here okay you are not talking about your digestive cavity you are talking about your sea loam now pseudo sea loam mate they possess pseudo seal right and that is the reason over here you don't have that indication of pseudo seal so that's why that answer cannot be considered and entero seal going back to your previous slides the two slides that i had shown you entero seelomates and seezo seelomates so if you know entero seelomates then you know what is entero seal then you can select the correct answer so that's the reason you need to know the basics if you know all the terminologies it becomes easy to understand and choose the correct answer so entero seelomates are the ones to possess entero seal now if you are you if you know that entero seelomates have echinodermates and cordates only you very well know that hydra is nowhere going to be over here right so it justifies that you need to select in that question entero seel uh, sorry cylenteron only so that's how your uh, body cavity of hydra will be known as cylenteron another one which one of the following is characterized by the absence of true seelom now this should be very easy you have the chart you can look into it and tell me nematoda okay i told you that eschelmentis might not always be written as eschelmentis they might also be labeled as phylum nematoda so you need to know that nematoda is the one which is the group of round worms so uh, even the loose words you should be able to make out round worms belong to nematodes flat worms belong to flatly helminthes this should be clear right so here the answer is going to be nematodes now one more concept is levels or grades of organization now uh, if you have seen your chart properly you have organization as a very second word you need to know what is the kind of organization available to your uh, body system unless and until you don't know this it, it becomes difficult to go inside the life processes and that is the reason grades of or levels of organization will help you judge lot of things when you don't have a body with organ system you cannot expect some particular organ you know uh, over there into your mcqs belonging to that animal so if you know which grade it belongs to it you can have a judgment whether it's going to have certain tissues 
it's going to have certain cells it is going to have certain organ organ system or not now if you are talking about a small amoeba and you are you no know, having an mcq related to amoeba with ami amoeba with respect to tissue gray it is useless because there is nothing like tissue gray in amoeba now how do you know this because you know that amoeba belongs to protoplasmic a cellular body gray and that's the reason understanding and you uh, know going thoroughly through this chart is very important if you will see in the chart the very first is protoplasmic organization and there is only one group to it that is protozoa okay so whenever you have protoplasmic organization when you say a cellular it means you are talking about one unicellular organism wherein protoplasm plays all the roles so there is no existence of any system here you can't expect any organs here what you can expect is the cell playing the whole role for all the system whether it is digestion excretion whatever and if you remember your you uh, know amoeba structure you will find vacuoles in it food vacuoles contractile vacuoles they are the ones who do this particular function of digestion of food uh, releasing the excretory waste all this is being carried down by them why the reason is it's just one single cell protoplasmic organism and that's why you name it of the grade of a cellular kind you are not going above then comes cellular grade now in cellular grade you are going to have your poriferens particularly at cellular level when you see a poriferens like a sponge or leucosolenia uh, you will find group of cells over there they are multicellular right but then you are not going to have any specific tissue formation and that's why you label them as cellular organization it doesn't go at the tissue level who goes at tissue level cilentre nidarians go at tissue level okay when you see nidarians hydra and all are going to have specific tissue formation over there so that's why it is cell tissue organization now with each of the complexity increasing you have the evolution happening you are going to have more complex organisms coming the capacity of the organisms is also increasing in terms of survival rate okay because or rather in terms of uh, facing the external environment okay their body is helping them more and that is one reason when you move from protozoa to mammals in mammals you restrict only to sexual reproduction because they they are not vulnerable to uh, problems related to atmospheric or climatic changes whereas if you go to amoeba protozoa you are going to have long list of asexual and sexual reproduction modes the reason is amoeba is more vulnerable to your atmospheric changes so and that is the reason you just don't uh, know uh, you are going in a sequence actually you are not just putting uh, mammal first and then putting amphibian and then putting reptile it's not there you go in a sequence you start with always protozoa in any book whenever you read reference it starts with protozoa it will end with echinodermite because it's following the grades it's going towards from lower to the higher development and that is the reason all of them they have a specific reason to be placed one after the other that is what is we call phylogenetic arrangement right so here you are going to have cellular and cell tissue kind of organization then comes the tissue organ system or tissue organ grade of organization which you will find it with number of them for example your you uh, know uh, tinophoras there after the plethelminthes they are all going to be into this tissue grade organization and obviously organ system all your higher chordates they are going to be the ones which uh, consider this organ systems so that's how levels or grades of organization is very important what we consider here is this number of cells and the degree of complexity or how many specialized cells are available and how many tissues it is forming accordingly you put them into different grades and that's how you are going to have grades or levels of organization apart from this there is one more concept that is metamerism segmentation of the body or dividing the body into segments so what exactly uh, this means so we are talking about segmentation generally in bilateral animals we are not into the radial kind of animals so whenever you have an mcq related to metamerism you it should click to you that you have to switch yourself into bilateral organism and forget about the radial organisms because they are never going to show you metamerism 
it's all about bilateral bilateria okay so those organisms they are going to divide themselves sorry into linear series of similar sections lots of parts will be formed in a longitudinal uh, no division of the body and those each parts or each uh, segment that's going to be known as somite or they are also known as metamers so metamers or somites will be formed in the whole body and this whole thing this whole phenomenon is known as metamerism so metamerism uh, again uh, you no know, segmentation of the body again is very important now if you go to the lower groups uh, there is not segmentation but there is definite division of the body for example arthropods if you go to arthropods you will always find a characteristic that it is divided into three parts head trunk tail or it's divided into cephalothorax abdomen and tail okay so this is how you divide your body part but over here metamerism doesn't mean that when you say you you are talking about body division it is different and when you say you are segmenting the body it is different you are segmenting the body in two ways first of all you are making a linear series secondly you are dividing it into equal parts you are not having unequal groups of segments here you are having all equal groups of segments the segments are going to be almost equal in sizes so that's what is metamerism and segmentation which you will see best in your earthworm annelids they show you the best uh, metameric segmentations internal as well as external now this also has many types like you have incomplete metamerism complete metamerism external metamerism internal metamerism which will be different uh, as per the type of the organism you need to study right but you do have variations in how metamers are being formed even we are considered to have a metameric body but then the definition doesn't go with this okay our definition of dividing our body into segments doesn't go with this particular definition but you can always say that mammals have metamerism okay so there is going to be difference according to the three or four main types of metamerism which are available now your question a uh, pseudo metamerism or strobilization or annulation it is seen in which organism what is pseudo metamerism pardon strobilization and you all these are all the same ones when you say strobilization it's pseudo metamerism and when you say annulation it is once again the same pardon external to some extent external metamerism and strobilization is very common with tapeworm have you seen tapeworms so when you see a tapeworm you know it's having a very small tiny scallop the head part is very small very very uh, no fin kind of now that particular portion is known as scallop which is having hooks and suckers and all those things uh, and then the bo body the ribbon like body starts now that ribbon like body if you have ever drawn take one you will always find that there are squares squares arranged those squares are nothing but those are known as strobila you can't name them as you can never obviously say squares but that is what how you know actually draw you will draw some small sized ones then you will draw some bigger ones at the end of the take one the reason is the bigger ones are the mature strobila and that is why it is pseudo metamerism because in metamerism you will generally never have larger metamers and smaller metamers all are going to be same it's not going to be like few are uh, no different in size and the other few are different in size but here it's going to be different in case of tapeworm when you are talking about a uh, strobila you are having some immature segments wherein still the reproductive organs have not developed it remains undeveloped but when you are going to talk about the major huge larger segments of the body which you generally name it as annulus okay that's why it is annulation so when you are talking about that those particular ones are having very mature you know uh, this ovaries and uh, the, the very mature testes so that it can actually do the function of reproduction and those are being separated from the body many a times even though they are separated they can do their function of reproduction and they are known as gravid proglottids so gravid proglottids are nothing but those mature strobilas which are having all the organs mature in case of tapeworm 
and that is the reason these are pseudo metamers and these are not your actual metamers so if you see now in this chart here also you are going to find out uh, metamerism available segmentation can you see segmentation that is nothing but metamerism if you see that it's written a a a at number of places a means absent now this chart is particularly talking about invertebrates and that is the reason you will find with majority groups it's not there but when you see annelids it's plus so now if so somebody asks you a question from which phylum metamerism phenomena begins you have to write its annelid so you should know that it is from the annelid group metamerism begins or if you have a question wherein you are being given four options of animals now if you have four options of animals given wherein some option is coming from the uh, no uh, animals uh, the below this annelid group maybe they have given some uh, names uh, uh, from platyhelminthes or silentrate and then one annelid is kept and then there after directly one mammal is kept and then you are being asked to judge that out of this four animals which animal shows metameric segmentation then you should be clear that all the animals which are below annelid group they are never going to show metamerism so you don't have to remember that those organisms you don't have to judge it it's only you have to remember is that from annelids it starts that you should remember then your mcq becomes easy for you okay so that's how you have to recollect this particular chart when you are solving your mcqs and that it's very very important to understand these all basic four five six concepts that are given here now same way you see the digestive tract when you will see the digestive tract you will find the word incomplete without anus can you read that incomplete without anus and that goes till your platyhelminthes right now incomplete digestive tract means what it means that you are going to have only one opening that is mouth you have nothing like an anus available so that is what is known as incomplete digestive tract right now that's available with how many groups till platyhelminthes you are going to have that incomplete digestive tract thereafter you are going to have complete with anus okay and then if you read little bit further you will find complete with anus and protostomic why protostomic because we divided them into two those two groups so you have this nematodes from the nematodes the protostomic group that change in coelomic cavity is coming we are concerned with the coelomic cavity because we are also concerned with that digestive tract that's why they have mentioned it here so if you thoroughly understand this chart it becomes really easy for you to undergo this particular you no know, complete uh, information of taxonomy in a very short period of time it's never difficult to undertake taxonomy it's just that you don't put your efforts into if you put the efforts into you are really going to find it very easy and it's a lifelong understanding ek bar samajh gaye the kabhi bhi taxonomy puchhenge problem nahi hoga wo koi bhi exam mein aayega in taxonomy basically aata hi hai नेट में जाओगे तो नेट एग्जाम में भी आएगा वेर एवर यू विल गो इवन विथ लॉट्स ऑफ एग्जाम्स रिलेटेड टू अब्रॉड इफ देर इज अ लाइफ साइंस एग्जाम दिज आर द मोस्ट कॉमन क्वेश्चन कमिंग फ्रॉम जोलॉजी यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द बेजिक्स ऑफ योर टेक्सोनॉमिक आस्पेक्ट्स राइट नाउ यू सी द एक्सक्रीटरी ऑर्गेन्स इन दैट यू कैन सी नंबर ऑफ द फाइलम वेर इन इट्स रिटर्न ए एंड देन इट्स रिटर्न पी एस कैन यू रीड दैट पी एस so that is pseudo silo you, uh, you can find the short forms written below right so that is what is pseudo silo is playing the role for excretion right and then you can see one more term that is lo lophophoric silomate now this is a new term lophophoric silomate what do you mean by this the way we have seen those previous ones pseudo silo mates and entero silo mates okay you have a more term that is lophophoric silomates actually lophophores are group of organisms they are going to have special tentacle like structures the way you have cilia they are going to have tentacle kind of structures and those structures are going to cover completely the mouth so mouth is totally surrounded by some kind of fibers kind of moving tentacles 
and then the whole body structure will start. Now these organisms are labeled as lophophorids and the, the silomic cavity is also going to be the one which has this kind of lophophores. They are not known as tentacles, they are generally known as lophophores. So lophophores are possessed by this particular uh, no, silomates and that's why they have a special name lophophorid silomates. So you need to know that there is a change in silomate cavity when you are going away from your animal, uh, moving towards your animal going away from nematodes and that's why that LOLO is written. Thereafter you can see SC that is cesocelome. Okay, the MEMA is other ones for excretory organs. Ma. So again you will have that SC and EN that is enterocelome. Can you make out? Right? Fine. Thereafter you have one more word that is flame cells. In case of uh, certain cases in coelome, platyhelminthes ma jo so coelome na section ma to FC vancha se. Madhu, that is flame cells. Now flame cells are the excretory units. Okay, flame cells are the cells which are having cilia. Okay, so it is actually a cell which has. Uh, we shouldn't say actually cilia because it's one or two only. It's present within inside the body and it's constantly flickering. It flickers. It keeps on moving, moving, moving constantly. Unfortunately, I have removed that slides. Uh, I had a photograph of it. Maybe some if somebody wants to see it, I can show later on. But then you have these cells which are having cilia kind of projections which are constantly flickering. They keep on moving. The way you see a candle, when you burn a candle, you, have, you see the flame of the candle, it's little flickery. So that kind of flickering movement is seen within the cell and that's why the cell is named as flame cell. Technically it is a proto-nephridia. Nephridias you know. Nephridias are also excretory units, right? Found in which group? Earthworm, that is annelids, right? But flame cells are proto-nephridias. So protonephridias are the ones actually technically you have to use that term but because of this kind of flickering movement of the cell these cells are known as flame cells. So many a times you don't have a complete system of excretion but you are just going to have a network of this kind of flame cells available which will do the purpose or solve the purpose of excretion within that body. So that is what is present in this fleshy element is and you uh, know this uh, all these uh, groups very rotifers and all which are having flame cells within it. But it's not present when you see below groups. It's not going to be the flame cells. So whenever you're moving further, you're going to have the development of the systems coming up, particularly towards arthropods and all. Okay? Then circulatory system. In circulatory system, you can see almost everywhere, uh, very, very few plus signs are there. Uh, and the plus signs are all somewhere near the molluscans, starting from the molluscans. Till that you are not having many of the organisms showing you presence of uh, circulatory system. Okay. Now in case of molluscans, these molluscans are the ones which are having typical kind of circulatory system uh, which you can see when you are injecting some chemical from outside because the blood is going to be blue in case of many of the molluscans. So if you really want to see the circulatory system, you need to inject some ink within the body and then you have to dissect and then you can see the whole you know, structure. Otherwise, you will never be able to find out where exactly the circulatory system is. But it's very, very primitive beginning of the circulatory aspect over here, right? Now, we know in arthropods that arthropods have hemocene, right? So, hemocene is the one wherein your fluid is going to mix up with the silo, silomic cavity filled up with the blood, right? What happens is that we even though you are saying it, it has so many vessels, then, it, then too you are saying it's open because the vessels are interacting with the cavity. They are not interacting amongst themselves. Okay, and they are not the only carriers of the material. They are interacting with the material present inside the cavity and that's why you name it as open circulatory system. So always that definition that closed circulatory means closed vessels hote hain aur open mein vessels nahi hote hain wo hamesha true nahi hota hai abhi wo concept clear hona chahiye kyunki aise tumko confusing questions aayenge to tumko fir tab pata chalna chahiye nahi har baar wo hamari definition kaam nahi karti hai 
okay you should exactly know when you are saying this kind of words right so here also you have as you have incomplete complete digestive tract you have two types of circulatory system open system and closed circulatory system right so that is what is uh, with your circulatory and with respiratory system see system is present once again if you will see all the systems in this chart they are almost present in the lower groups it's not present in the upper groups and that is the reason this upper groups are known as lower invertebrates they are labeled as lower invertebrates in invertebrates also we divide the invertebrates into two major groups one are higher invertebrates which will show you the presence of which will start showing you the presence of development of different systems to some extent whereas in lower ones you will not find anything you are just going to have certain particular organs you are going to have few particular no or uh, a systematic arrangement of the organs utilized for your functioning of the body that's it but you won't find a complete system playing role for that particular physiological process so that's why lower invertebrates and higher invertebrates right and that difference is also given uh, on your second page middle page there are two tables you can see the upper one upper table you will find one uh, contrast between lower and higher invertebrate group right so this you should read before you go for your exams and this lower table which gives you the technical differences between invertebrates and vertebrates that you can read now here this non chordates and chordates are loosely utilized okay so that time you should realize that this words placed here are very loosely utilized Fine, but it will basically give you all the differences that are present with invertebrate and vertebrate. This will make your judgment and your logic strong for your MCQs. Once you have a very clear logic, you can select the best option available because many a times you will find that in your MCQs all are correct, all are closed. Now what to do? How to select? At that time your concepts play the role. You have to find out the answers using these things. during that particular moment that whether it belongs to this okay it's not this fine then i can select this so you are not going haphazard you are going in a very scientific way right so that is all about your little taxonomy i have not covered anything more all the best for those who are appearing in the exams and all the best to those who will appear some day in some exams right that is it any questions if you have you can just keep on asking वो पर्सनली करें क्योंकि उसमें मुझे डायग्राम दिखाना पड़ेगा इसमें नहीं होगा उसमें एग्स का कंडीशन देखना पड़ेगा सी जनरली क्या होता है वेन एवर यू हैव टी वेज यू हैव एन एग विच इज हैविंग योग ओके सो योग इज जनरली सेटल्ड बिलो एंड ऊपर का जो लेयर होगा वो एम टी होगा नाउ दैट विल इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द टाइप ऑफ द एग्स यू आर जनरली टॉकिंग सो वॉट हैपन्स इज यू हैव बेसिकली फोर और फाइव डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एग्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन द कंडीशन ऑफ योग प्रेजेंट इन इट एंड हाउ इट इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड whether it is lying below it is seated below or it's distributed well distributed throughout the egg or it is totally filled up only upar upar ka wo embryo disk bacha hai aur pura bhar diya hai kaise hai to kya hoga ki jab hi ni cleavage hona hai to cleavage also uses pattern to jab wo planes use karega to plane andar tak ja nahi payega to pura division nahi hoga agar aapke paas bahut zyada yog hai तो ऊपर ऊपर ही डिवीजन होगा नीचे का योग ऐसे ऐसे का ऐसा ही रहेगा एंड दैट इज वेयर यू विल हैव हिट्रोब्लास्टिक क्लीवेज इफ यू आर हैविंग इक्वल डिवीजन यू आर गोइंग टू हैव होलोब्लास्टिक क्लीवेज वो उसमें बहुत सारे स्टेजेस हैं दैट्स आई एम सेइंग इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल टू कवर ईच ऑफ देम ओवर हियर बट यू कैन यूज देर इज वेरी गुड बुक एम्ब्रियोलॉजी कॉडेट एम्ब्रियोलॉजी बाई पी एस वर्मा इफ यू कैन जस्ट गो इन टू दैट बुक देर आर वेरी मेनी गुड डायग्राम्स Uh, further reading, if you want to do, you can uh, use Gilbert Embryology by Gilbert. That book is also very good for your basics of embryology. It will cover up all the comparative aspects of animal science. And whenever you are appearing in entrances, don't just read phylum. Read comparative aspects. Okay? You you are you never come across comparative studies of the animals, and that's the reason it becomes difficult for you to. understand and uh, no find out the correct answer what you should technically do is take systems and go through each system from protozoa till that of mammal in a comparative way 
when you do like that you come to know that what is the state of that system in each of the finder and then it becomes easy for you to understand kaun se organs hai kaise kaam karta hai kis mein kya hai kis mein kaun si cheez nahi hai wo system ki to wo aapka clear ho jayega pehle you know initially when we used to teach old syllabuses used to have comparative you uh, know uh, this kind of anatomy and physiology and all unfortunately ab nahi hai but books are there you can go through the books and find out and do a comparative study of this uh, systems into the animal kingdom that will make you more stronger in appearing in the exams wherein zoology is one of the key portions right okay anything